Now, folks, you can't read this, something like that, and just walk past it and say, oh, that's nice. That is not nice. It just said that God can't even look on evil, that he can't look on wickedness. Yet, the Bible claims he sees, hears, and knows all things. If that's true, folks, guess what? He is looking upon evil. He is looking upon wickedness. They both can't be true. So is this true? How can it be? How can that statement be true? So this is what I'm trying to get you all to, to, to do. When you read something like that, stop. Say, wait a minute, man. If God is holy, he can't look upon evil and wickedness. And he knows everything that's happening in the world. Can he not see everything? Because there's definitely wickedness going on. There's definitely evil in the world. And what about the demons? He don't see that? The answer is yes. Then you have to answer the question, why? You can't leave that just lingering out in the air like that. You got to stop and figure out in the word, how can both be true? How is that possible? It may take you a month of reading the scriptures to find out how can both be true. But please, this points to the character and the attributes of God. This how you know your God. By finding the answer to this dilemma of God being holy and not being able to look upon evil and wickedness and all the evil and wickedness you see going on in the world. Answer that question. Guys, both, both can't be true. But according to the Bible, they're both true. How? I showed it to you already. As a matter of fact, I showed it to you just a little while ago. I'll point it out again. So you know how and where to go start looking and doing some homework for yourself. Folks, look, I'm challenging you because I don't want to just sit here. I want to teach and explain, but I want you to learn this stuff for yourself. One day, I've only entered into your life as a tool God is using to help prepare you for something that's coming in to your life. Do you realize that? One day, all the teachers and people God placed in your life Whatever he was using them to pour into your life, he's going to remove that. And all you're going to have left is what you know according to the scriptures. You can't go around saying, Kevin said. Who cares what Kevin said? You have to be able to say, God said, the scriptures said, let me show you where it's at. This is what happened. I'm going to take this part of this and I'm going to 
scribe it out for you again. Just that one part right there. All right. Remember, this is the world. Yes, I know. It's just a picture, folks. Well, it's just an illustration. <laughs> Okay, so what do I have here for those that don't know? These are what the Bible called realms. Oh, you thought that was only in the cartoons. No, it's real. The demons let these people know that it's real. Okay, so when we talk about the world, this is what the Bible is talking about. The world's made up of three components. Heaven, what's over here? God. Where is God today? He's over here, folks. The world is made up of heavens, the heaven, the heavens, and the earth. The heavens and the earth make up the two realms. Spirit realm, where all the angels and God is, and the physical realm, where people are. And everything that's that's knowable by man. This is all of the universe. Anything that can be known by man. That's what this is. Okay. Now, you say, Kevin, if God is over here, then who it is that's in heaven? All right. So, right here, in this part, in number two, you have the demons. This is their abode, okay? Over here, you have the Lord Jesus, the physical, visible part of God, and you have the angels. You say, wait a minute, Kevin. How can God, Jesus, be here and over here? The question is, how can he not be? <laughs> you asked the wrong question. He's God, folks. He encompasses eternity. Now, the Spirit of God, the Father, when the Father comes into the world, he can't come into this world. So what happened? Let me just explain. I can't get into details. It's going to just really take too long. All right. So what happened? How did this all come into being? Okay. So before God created any of this stuff, so when God talks about creation in Genesis 1, this is what he's talking about. This whole thing right here. All right. Where was God before he created heaven? That's the question. He was out there by himself. Okay. A perfect place to start is Proverbs chapter 8. So. Let me just write it down for you. Proverbs chapter 8. Start at around verse 18. I think it's where Jesus starts talking. Okay. So when, when we see this right here, and I'm going to just move it over to give myself some more room. When we see that right there, this, my friend, This, my friend, is what the Bible calls, uh, this is creation. Everything on this side, all of it, the heaven, all of the stuff, folks, is what the Bible is talking about as creation. It includes this, okay? It includes this. It includes all of this stuff right here. Right. So when God says creation, that's what he's talking about. All right. The question then becomes, where was God before? Where was God? Let me use a different color. 
Where was God before he did this? He was over here. God was by himself. Now, what do I mean by by himself? We're talking about the Godhead. We're talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the Godhead. All right? They were over here. This is one. It's not three gods. These three made up, this makes up this one God. They were over here outside of all of this stuff right here. Now, this God, this God determined to make creation. Now, to himself, he is visible, but he's holy and he is invisible. So God, this God is invisible. Now, he determined to create some stuff for what? What's the purpose? God determined to do something, reveal himself. In order to do that, in order to reveal himself, what did he have to do? God had to make himself visible. God, the invisible God, had to become visible to his creation. How did he do that? He inserted himself into the body of a man. Before he made anything. That man was sacrificed because God knew in order to reveal himself and to reveal his attributes He would have to allow evil. Got that? To make himself visible, God took on a body. You mean he created a body? No. He had a body, and he's allowing us to understand how. He possessed that body. Why it became necessary for the invisible God to reveal the fact that he was inside the body of a man. He was always there. That's what Proverbs 8 tells us. Okay, now let me just quickly show you this. And we'll come right back to this. All right, so you can follow me and understand what he said. Okay. Come on. Hey. Watch this. Now, I'm not going to read a lot of this, folks. I'm just going to go here. I started at verse 22. All right, now listen. Listen very carefully. This is God explaining this part right here. After he explained this first, he then turns around and tells you how he did this. 
Watch the progression. This is why I love the Lord. The Lord. Who's the Lord? God. Who is God? The Godhead. We know the Godhead as Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So the Lord, the Godhead, did something. What did he do? He possessed. You got that? You got that? He possessed me. Me? Yes. Who's talking right here? Who wrote the book? Solomon. Do you think God possessed Solomon? Of course not. So who's talking? This is Jesus talking through the man, Solomon. When did God do that? At the beginning, beginning of his way. What is that? Before, don't walk over that. He started any works. What works? Creation. Over. God possessed Jesus at the beginning of his way before he created anything. I, this is the same person talking right over here. This is Jesus saying, I have been what? Established. What did he mean? Established. It's the same word, folks. Possessed. I was dead. When? From everlasting. Solomon is not there from everlasting. Jesus is there from everlasting. He continues. From the beginning. Before there was ever an earth. When there was no depths, what is that? That's the spirit realm. What about it, Jesus? I was brought forth. Do you understand what this guy is saying? What he just said? When there was no fountains, Abounding in water. What is that? Go back to Genesis 1. God separated the waters and made the heavens. He separated the heavens and made the heaven of heavens where he would reside. And the other part became the heavens. Folks, this is Genesis 1. Then he went on to start talking about the physical creation before there was a mountain settle, before the hills. I, Jesus, was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth or the fields or the primal dust of what? The world. You say that's the earth. No, it's not. He had not made the earth or the fields. They're not the same. Things that are different are not the same. The earth he's talking about is physical creation. The fields he's talking about is where he put it. Nor the primal dust of the world. What is that? The spirit realm. God hadn't made anything. What did Jesus say? I was brought forth. Now, 
just in case you're a little confused, he goes on and explains it even further. When he, who's the he? The Godhead, God, prepared, not when he created it, when he prepared it, the heavens. What about it, Jesus? I was there. I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, folks, listen. This is what he was talking about. This is Jesus Christ talking. When he did this, that, and the other. There I was there beside him as a master craftsman. What is he talking about? Since God had possessed him was on the inside of that body, God was the one inside the body, just like you are lifting, I'm lifting my arm. Who's lifting this arm? My spirit. Just like I can see and I can speak, who's speaking? The body is nothing. Spirit inside of me, who is alive, is speaking through my mouth. So, when the Bible says God said, and he's using the body of that man, Jesus, who it is speaking? It's God speaking. Now, watch this. I had no intentions on teaching this, but I, I need to be able to show you guys and back up what I'm saying in the scripture so that you can understand I'm making stuff up. So when I go back to that illustration, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now listen to this. God, at various times, Hebrews chapter 1, various times, when he created time, with him there is no time, and in various ways, what did God do? He spoke. Who spoke? Jesus. Who spoke? God. To the, in the past, to the fathers by the prophets in these last days has spoken directly to us by his son. How he came into the world. Whom he appointed, now listen, whom he appointed heir of all things. When did he do that? Before he created all things. When he took possession of it. How did he do that? Because it was God inside of him. All things belong to the God that was inside of him. If God is inside, and I'm just using me as an example. This is an example, folks. If God was living inside of my body, and I was God's resident, when you come to God, who would you have to come to? me why because god is on the inside of me and everywhere my body would go god would go every time my body would speak god would speak if i wasn't present God wasn't be present why because he's inside my body so wherever this body goes god is going Jesus said, the Father is on the inside of me. You can't come to the Father unless you come to me. Why? Because the Father is only living inside of one person. Who? Jesus. He possessed the body. He's heir of all things. Through whom? Who's the whom? His son, the body, the man. God, this he points out back to God, made what? The world's folks who being the brightness of his glory. Listen. 
the express image, the visible part of the person of God. There you have it. Now, you see that? God made the world through this man. You've seen in Proverbs 8 that he possessed it. Now, watch this. I'm going to go to two more scriptures and then I'm going to wrap this up. So you can see it. The Lord is high, Psalm 113, above all nations. His glory, and I showed you the other day, God's glory is none other than Jesus Christ. He is the glory of God. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells where? On high. Who did what? Humbles himself. Why did you do that, God? To behold, to see, to view, to make the things that are where? In heavens and in the earth. To create anything. What did God have to do? God had to humble himself. To create anything, that's what it says. How did he do that? That's the question. What are we now about to find out? How? We know the why. I explained that to you. How did you do this, God? We've seen in Proverbs 8. Now, is there another reference we can go to? Yes. God never leaves himself without a witness. The scriptures testify of him. He don't need some man. You don't need me, and you don't need you. He's God. Okay. Now, let this mind be in you. What mind? The mind of God, meaning the mind of thinking like God thinks. Where was this mind? The mind was in Jesus Christ. Whose mind was in Jesus Christ? God. Who? Who's the who? This man, Jesus Christ. Being present tense, always being. He is always being what? He's in the form of something. What is Jesus in the form of? God. Now, please explain that to me. How can this man be in the form of God who is a spirit? When God took possession of the body, like we read in Proverbs 8. Like we read in Hebrews 1. He was in the form of God. He did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. When? When he was in the form of God. When was this man ever in the form of God? Before he made himself visible. but made himself of no reputation. How did he do that? Taking, notice, he took the form of a bondservant. What is that? A slave, folks. What did that look like? He came into the world in the likeness of men. The likeness of men. He wasn't just a man. 
but he robed himself in the body of a man, not the body of an angel, the body of a man. And being found in appearance, how? As a man. You see him all over the Bible in the Old Testament showing up as a man. What did that look like and what did that do for this person who is in the form of God? That part of him, God humbled himself. What did we see that at? In Psalms 113. God explains it in the book of Philippians. How did God humble himself? He became into the world. He was found. Found by who? Angels. In mankind. That's who found him. Scene of angels, scene of men. He humbled himself and became obedient for the sole purpose of death. Death on the cross. Why did he do that? Let me show you. It was already done. Now, after everything that we read, he humbled himself. When did he do that? Before his works of old, like we read in Proverbs 8. He humbled himself. Oh, let me show you one more thing. And I believe it's in Revelation, folks. Again, I got to look this one up because I don't know the exact chapter and verse. With, uh, basically, what I'm looking for is... Uh, before the, the foundation of the world, the lamb that was slain. Okay, Revelation. I'm going to show you this. So you weren't thinking I'm making stuff up. All right, so what are we looking at? Now I want to show you this part so that you can understand what's being said. All right. Now listen, I'm just going to read this one verse. It's talking about the beast, but I'm doing it because of, this is my point. Look at what it says. And all who dwell on the earth worshiped him, talking about the Antichrist, whose names were not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Who's the Lamb? Jesus. This Lamb was slain. When was the Lamb, when was Jesus Slain. When was he crucified? Before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ was on the cross, buried, raised from the dead before all of this was created. Why did God do that? It was necessary. The payment for sin to allow God to keep from destroying that which he was trying to create because of his holiness, the payment for evil, the payment for sin, the payment for the devil, the demons, and all unbelievers had to be made first. God paid himself in blood. Whose blood? The blood of this man. Before the foundation of the world, before he created it. And then after he took the resurrected body, God made all of this. When he made all of this, now 
as domain, he can be patient. Allow the book, the, 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 the prophecies that's in the book to play out and deal with sin, the judgment of sin, the execution of the judgment of sin to take place later. How do I know that? Show this to you too, but I'll show it to you again. It's right here. But now the righteousness of God apart from works is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith to all and upon all, listen, but only on those who believe. For there's no difference, but all have sinned and come, fall short of the glory of God. Now, being justified, Freely, now that the blood is shed, by his grace, God can apply grace through the redemption that is in Christ. When did that happen? Before creation. That's what I just showed you. When did that happen? Before creation. Whom God set forth. That's what that set forth means. He set him forth as a sacrifice to satisfy his righteous, holy character and attributes. How? By the blood. By the blood. The blood. Through faith. For the sole purpose of demonstrating his own righteousness. Because. Here it is. This is what I want to show you. We talked about this. In his forbearance, God can now, because of this propitiation of blood that was done before the creation, God can now have forbearance and pass over sin that were previously committed. Who previously committed them? God allowed sins to be done before he created the world. So who previously committed them? Everybody, because God knows all things. Sins were committed, listen, so that when they actually take place, this right here, previous committed, means before creation. This right here is after creation. That he may be just and save so. This is what he's talking about. You see how wonderful this word is? This is glorious. Now, when he finishes with this, this is where we are. We're living in this world right here. When he finished with this, and God saves whoever he wants to save out of this world, he creates a new world. This heaven then become part of this earth. Separate, but a part of the physical creation. And God, according to, let me show you where it happens, right here. It's in two places. They explain the best in two places. Okay, I'm going to show you one. The other place is in Revelation chapter 21. But I'm going to show you this one first. Well, not, not first, but it's going to be the only one I'm going to show you. Okay. Here it is. 
Now listen. This is what he explains right here. But now Christ is risen from the dead. When? When? Before the foundation of the world. Then it became a reality as creation, the execution of it starts. It has become the first fruit of those who have fallen apart, fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as Adam, in Adam, all die. How many of us die? Oh, everybody. Everybody. That's how you know you're a sinner. Even so, in Christ, all shall be made alive. All? Yeah, everybody's going to live again. It's just that you're not going to all live in the same place. But each one, see, in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterwards those who are Christ at his coming. Christ the first fruits. So you got the first resurrection. Afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. Okay, there's your rapture. Then comes the end. What's the end? Great tribulation and when everything is over the thousand years. When the kingdom, now listen, the end comes when he, he, yes, Christ, delivers the kingdom to God, the Father. What do you mean he delivers it to God, the Father? Folks, <laughs> he can't deliver this mess to God the Father. It's contaminated. To, he delivers the kingdom to God the Father when he puts an end to all rule all authority, all power. For he must reign till he puts all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be destroyed is death. For he has put all things under his feet. But when he says, this is what I want to show you right here. I'm enlarging as big as I can. But when he says all things, when God says all things under the feet of his son, or put unto him, it is, it is what? Evident that God who put all things where? Under him. Who's the him? The him is Christ. Now, before I say anything, watch this. What did God do? God put all things under the visible part of his, uh, in his son, put Jesus here, he's out here, but God is expecting to receive and inherit this world without sin. All things under him, he is expecting. Now, when all things, when all things, evil is gone, judgment is done, are made subject to Christ, this is Christ, watch this, then the Son himself will also be subject to him, the Father, the Godhead, our God. All things under him. God then comes into the world. Where is that? Isn't this beautiful how God put this together? Come on. Okay. What is it that Jesus is going to put under his feet and bring back and give to the Father? Here it is right here. Now, I saw what? I saw a new heaven, heaven, and a new earth. For the first 
heaven and the first earth did what? Passed away. They were absolutely destroyed. Peter shows us that in Second Peter. You can go see that where the world is totally destroyed. The world, the heaven, the heavens, and the earth. Also, there was no more sea. The sea came about when there were uh, the earth change after sin. Then I, John, saw the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride. Behold, the tabernacle of God. What's the tabernacle of God? His son is with men. He will dwell with them. Who will dwell with him? Them. God. And they shall be his people. God. Who? God himself. What is he talking about? God himself. Ah. He's talking about God himself right here. That's what he's talking about, God himself. Who's over here and not in this world. This world gets destroyed. It gets annihilated. Boom, goes away. God himself will be with them. Now he's in the world, but he don't come into the world until the new heaven and the new earth is here. You see, God is not in this world. The father, who's in this world? The son, until he put all his enemies beneath his feet. Death, meaning sin, being the last one. God will wipe away all the tears and all this stuff, right? That's what it says, folks. It goes on. And I, I can I can get to the other, but look, we're wasting too much time. <laughs> we're past time. I don't mean wasting time. We were just past time. I took a turn that I didn't expect. So that's how God did that. Okay? That's your answer to this verse. Folks, that's a lot to answer one part of one verse. That's how extensive you need to be studying the Bible to be able to explain that to somebody. That's what I mean. That's studying and mining the Word of God. I'm not, please don't take that as me bragging on myself. I am not. I am here simply as a tool that God is using to help you understand how to study the Bible properly. That's it. You think I woke up knowing this stuff? No, somebody taught me. I'm just applying the same principles that they taught me. Dr. John Burnett, J. Vernon McGee, John MacArthur, Vardy Bottom, all these people who helped teach me and instruct me. And then I went into the book and I built upon the stuff that they taught me how to study the book. I'm just passing it on. Those men are older. They're going to be passing away pretty soon. Somebody else have to pick up that banner. God gave me the gift, so I'm using it. I'm giving it to you. You pick up the banner. You teach others. Okay. For such a high priest was fitting, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners. God, Jesus, is separate from sinners, folks, and has become higher than the heavens. Who's become higher than the heavens? Jesus Christ. What heavens? The heavens that's in the world. What is he talking about? You ever wonder what he meant by that? Jesus Christ is higher than the heaven. Why? Because he's God. He exists even outside of his own creation. That's what he's talking about. But as he who called you, now notice, you didn't call on God. God called you. God called you. He's holy. Everybody who God called, J. 
just like the angels that he made holy, you also ought to be holy in your conduct. Your works now, your works, just like we've seen here, should now be up here, holy and not unholy. See that? That's the way it should work. And if it's not working like that in you, then you need to go get saved. Then the four living creatures, we read that. Now, this is in Revelation. This is a much later, different time, right? This is in Revelation. We read it in Isaiah. What did they do? They did not rest their night. I'm so jealous. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Who is these four now living creatures with six wings? They're the seraphim that we've seen in Isaiah. He is the rock. His work is perfect. You see that? God's work is perfect. What's not perfect? His work didn't remain the way he made it. Hence, you and I sinned. And in Adam, we all died. For all God's ways are justice. He said, God is unjust. No, not according to the word of God. We need to understand that. So when you see things happening, you can't say God isn't just. You're impugning the character of the Most High God. No, God is just. You and I both deserve to be cast in the hell and killed forever. We don't deserve redemption. A God of truth without injustice. He is righteous. Upright is he. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? Everybody does. For you alone are holy. For all nations shall come and worship before you, for your judgments have been manifest. This is so wonderful. Okay. So, folks, there you have it. That's the Lord God. That's what he says about himself. You, look, do, do, you, do you have to know this stuff to, to serve God? No. But, boy, I tell you what. When things happen, good or bad, it is so wonderful to know, to know, really know that God, the Lord, is in absolute control. And I can leave you with this thought. For those of you who still sort of wondering, you know, about this evil stuff, wondering if God is in control, the Bible says he is. What do you think this world would look like if that holy, righteous, perfect, just, truthful God who is without injustice, who is righteous and upright, if he wasn't in control? What do you think this world would look like? Do you want to live in a world like that? I don't. So, get to know the Most High God, what a loving and kind God he is, how he shed his own blood so that he can redeem us. I pray that you would call upon his name. And while you are dead in your trespasses and sins and you can't say a word, the Bible makes it clear. What is impossible to you and to me is possible with God. I pray pre-adventure that you call on him that he would hear that prayer. Take care.